Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where I know it's the second video of the day. I'm just super excited about lots of things going on. And yeah, I want to talk about some databricks -y things. So there's two main points I want to cover today. One, we'll see the release of Databricks SQL to all environments under an ungated public preview, I think is the term. So Databricks SQL, you might have heard of originally when it was called SQL Analytics. And we did a few videos looking at this thing. It's where Photon was first released out into the wild. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of um, essentially a SQL ID based on Redash. It's the kind of uh, the dashboard visualization company that Databricks acquired. And it's just a better place to go write SQL using the Spark engine against everything you've logged in the Hive metastore. If you're looking to serve out data from your lake, it's a really good option. And it is basically, it's been on an interesting journey because it was released in a private preview. You had to go and in secret lists and then can get hold of it and have a play and demonstrate it with um, with some real nice use cases. Then it was in public preview, so we could talk about it, we could show everyone it, but you had to ask Databricks to enable your workspace. And so now in this final phase, we have it rolled out to all workspaces. So if you've got Databricks this week, you should have access to it and you can go and have a play. You can use it in anger. So if you see all these videos talking about Databricks SQL and you haven't really had a chance to get your hands on it, you can now go and check your environment you should have access and I'll show you how you do that in a moment. Also bundled into that is a really nice little improvement to the Data Explorer. Setting up permissions on your tables in Hive just got easier. So we'll show you what that looks like and how you can get started with that. On the other side of things, we've also this week seen the rollout of the Databricks community. So this is a new knowledge sharing forum. A new place you can go and ask your questions, talk to things, share posts, show off what you've done and showcase some of the cool stuff you guys are doing with Databricks. And it's kind of like replacing the previous kind of Databricks forums, which didn't have that much use. It was kind of quite hard to see where your questions were and hard, quite hard to get things answered. So it's a big revamp of trying to build out this Databricks community. Obviously, just reached out, spoke to people who are the beacons, hello, to try and get people involved and actually show people this new community. So you can, if you've got a question or if you've got something you want to share with the Databricks community, this is your place to go and do it. And it's full of people working Databricks, people from the Databricks community, people running user groups and leadership, all that kind of stuff, go and check it out. As a final note, I do want to do a little bit of self-promotion in that just over a week, it is Big Data London. We'll be doing a few sessions there with Advancing Analytics, so come and say hello if you're there. And in the Monday, Tuesday beforehand, we will be running some in-person training sessions and we've still got seats. There are still spaces on that course. So if you want some in-person training from myself and another MVP, Harry, big old data science nerd, then come along and ask all of your questions and we'll get you guys started on Databricks, Spark, and the whole world of experience that we have there. So come along, it'll be fun. I'll drop a link to our website, you can sign up through there, and then there's still that Beacon 10 discount if you're coming from YouTube. Cool, right, enough of that, on with looking at some stuff. So what you should see, if you've had it rolled out and enabled in your environment, is this little switch. So you can now click this button to switch from your data science and engineering persona into your machine learning persona or into your SQL persona. So Databricks SQL has been rolled out as a new persona, a new type of workspace inside Databricks. And the first time you come in, you'll get a little prompt. So this is all new. It's kind of a whole riot of things on the screen for you to look at. Um, essentially, there's a little getting started guide. So these bits here is just taking you through some of the things you need to do to get your Databricks SQL environment set up. There's going and actually creating a service principle. There's going associating it so that your user tries to write SQL over a CSV, over a JSON, so over some data. How does it connect to that? How's it actually going to connect into anything? Setting up some background privileges and settings for your SQL endpoints. We need to set up actual access. These users can read these tables. These users cannot read these tables, but they can read these tables. The kind of normal data access layer stuff that we need to do. And then looking at your endpoints, which are essentially your Spark clusters, which have made super easy. So the first time you come in, you can follow that guide through and it kind of takes you on that journey. It's nice. There's some, there's some sample data, there's some sample dashboards. They've put a lot of work in to kind of just teach people how this stuff works. So the first time you go in, you'll see these links. You go in, you can go and have a look at all the stuff, how you access service principles, how you set up your things, generally some settings for your data with SQL environment. Go nuts, have a look through. You can get that up to your heart's content. Now, what you will notice when you first come in is that there'll be this thing. So there will be a starter endpoint created for you. And that's basically just a SQL cl a Spark cluster. It's a Spark cluster in the Databricks SQL flavor. So it kind of gives you 
a t-shirt sizing so you don't pick a driver vm type you don't pick worker vm types or how many workers you just say is it small is it a medium is it a big and that will pick a pre-configured cluster setup for you so i think this one when it's created is automatically created as a small i just whacked it down to a 2 2x small because i don't need much i don't have a lot of data but that is all set up for you so you can go and have a play and have an explore of how all that stuff works so that is done for you uh, the cool new thing that i wanted to have a look at is this thing the data explorer now my cluster's just started so it's going to take a moment to have a think about what it's doing but this is essentially just a better way of viewing what's in hive so i can see in my default database in all my different databases i've got registered in hive i can have a dive into there get my tables it's kind of the same as it is in normal databricks then i can have a look at permissions so i can have a look at permissions on the database itself permissions on a given table and it does the normal is the schema can go off and run a query to show me the sample data you can give me the underlying details this is actually what's happening under the hood and permissions so i can go in here and say well actually i want to grant select access to a given user to uh, my gbr users we can all go and read access to that and we could always do that we could always do that but only through sql so we had to have people writing grant select on and then just programmatically writing that into a, a notebook that we manage and then pushing that out and then someone to say who has access on that table and we go uh, we can write a query to find out this is so much nicer actually just having that visual way of being able to see what permissions have been set who's been given access to things who've been given um who's had their access revoked who's not allowed to do certain things just it's good to have a ui over this stuff right so that whole data explorer and having that just there is something that's a little bit nicer to explore a little bit nicer to work with a little bit easier to see what's going on is have big improvement over the, the data tab in the traditional databook side of things. Now, when you're actually writing a query, it's it's better than that. So when you're writing a query, it'll go off and actually you've got a, a much better data explorer. So you can do that same thing. If I nip into AdventureWorks, get my list of things, I can go and have a look at the columns in there. I can add it to my query. I can do my normal. I want to do a select star from, it'll select, uh, tell me the address that I'm doing. So it's a database. So it's select star from dot address the gun up, up, shot. there we go so it gives us our list of stuff it's just easier to work with easier to write normal sql uh if i write terrible sql um i can actually just tell it to format it nicely for me there's lots of nice little things we've gone through videos of that i don't just show you that again but now all that is now available for you guys to go and have a play with so have a look through your getting started tasks configuring your data access looking at your endpoints have a work through a load of the sample stuff that they've rolled out there Obviously, make sure that you have data that has been registered in Hive before you get started with any of this stuff. But yeah, otherwise, get cracking, have a go, and let us know what you think. Because it'll be interesting to see what people think now that it's you don't have to ask for it. You don't have to say, oh, could you enable my workspace? Because that feels like a lot. You feel like you're, you're asking permission, you have to show you're using it. Now, anyone who has Databricks can go and have a play. It'll be interesting to know what you guys think. Two other bits. I'm not really interested in that. I want to know what the SQL endpoint setup is and then brand new catalog experiences. It's, I mean, a brand new catalog, is that Unity? We're going to see Unity catalog rolled out soon here because if it's saying it's almost here, that's that's a big promise. I've not seen much of it yet. So I'm really keen to see kind of what those things are going to look like. Is instant SQL endpoint, are we talking about Databricks SQL serverless or are we talking about something else that's an intermediate saying just these clusters, you still have to have a cluster turned on, but hopefully getting it snappier and faster to turn on would be really interesting to see. Hello. just an interesting little teaser that pops up cool right so that is data sql go knock yourselves out have a play with the data explorer have a play write some queries spin up a sql endpoint and give it a crack okay on to the community side of things so yeah uh there's a load of blogs gone off uh recently you should see this kind of stuff enhanced i've used the advanced analytics hexagon uh, logos mm -hmm. but it's all good um and yeah just go sign up there's a link to it and that'll open something like this so you have a community, you can set your profile, you can kind of build up a little bit of information if you want people to be able to find out who you are, what your skills are, ask you questions, all that kind of stuff. Um, otherwise, you can go and see all these different topics. You can just add new comments. You can go and question some stuff. You can go and see, look, there's lots of just very, very detailed technical questions people have thrown in there. You can dive in and say, you know, does this got any answers? Has anyone actually come up with this question? And actually, yes, generally lots of people in there. So really interesting basically knowledge base a question and answer forum 
a way to pose questions directly to the Databricks team and to the community. Um, I would really like it personally to see more of the, not just the technical Q&A, not just a Stack Overflow, but for Databricks. Uh, I'd like to see more of the people doing, the, hey, here's something cool I wrote. Hey, here's a really interesting thing. Hey, we're doing a meetup. Does anyone be a part of it? We're doing something really good for a charity or we're doing a social initiative using Databricks and Spark. Does anyone want to take a part of it? I'd love to see it building up more of a community than just the pure knowledge-based technical Q&A. But as a basis, it's a really good start. There's already lots of useful information in there. So take a look, get yourself signed up, start interacting, start answering questions, start asking questions, start getting involved. And it'll be really interesting to see how the community grows because I would love to see more of an active community around Databricks. And this is quite a good little starting place. So go and take a look. And that's it. That is all I want to talk to you about today. So Databricks SQL, go and take a look at it. It should be in your workspaces now. If it's not, then expect it in a couple of days, I'd assume. Follow through the little setup guide. There looks to be loads and loads of interesting samples and tutorials you can work with to kind of get a feel for how Databricks are assuming you're going to work with it. Watch some of the old videos about how you actually get started with it and, you know, some of the tutorials that we did right back when it was announced in public preview. And then, yeah, sign yourself up to the Databricks community. Get involved. Become part of the community. It'll be really good to see. Until then, let us know what you think. Always, always let us know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Yes.